but I'll just start off with a, a bit of an overview about obviously the tournament and kind of why we're all here today. Um, and then we can invite up some of the judges. Um, hopefully you guys can, can say a few words and talk a little bit about your backgrounds and, and kind of what you're looking forward to throughout this tournament. Um, so uh, hello and welcome everyone to another Bolt Fun Twitter space. Uh, this week we'll be talking about the upcoming Legends of Lightning tournament, uh, as well as some of the prizes that we've got on offer um, from the two available tracks, um, plus some of the criteria that uh, Makers Projects will be judged on. Um, we'll then, obviously, as I said, have the chance to introduce some of our judges and hear their thoughts about um, what they're looking forward to seeing over the next couple of months and what's going to be hacked on. Um, so a warm welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us. Um, for anyone that is new here, um, just briefly, the Legends of Lightning is Bolt Fund's first online global tournament. Um, and it's a chance for Makers to learn uh, connect, build, and accelerate their Bitcoin and Lightning projects over the course of two months, or about nine weeks. Um, we've got around $60,000 in prizes, about three Bitcoin, um, up for grabs for some of the top projects, um, including one whole Bitcoin for the grand champion, or the legend. Um, so from this Wednesday, uh, the 12th of October, all the way through till the 7th of December, uh, makers can start building... Uh, their projects uh, out in the open, uh, documenting their progress as they go for other makers to kind of see and to learn from on the Bolt Fund platform. Um, makers can basically enter either a new or an existing uh, project that they've been working on. However, obviously, people will be judged on the work that is completed between the actual tournament dates. Um, so we hope to see a good mix of kind of old and new projects and hopefully a lot of uh, innovation and growth kind of in between. Um, one aspect, which I'm sure we'll touch upon a little bit more today, is the idea of kind of building in public. I kind of just mentioned it as well. Uh, this is something that we've talked about prior to this event, and one of the seven uh, important judging criteria that we'll, we'll touch upon a bit later. Um, when trying to think about how we could solve some of the kind of crucial challenges that we currently see um, in the Bitcoin space, such as whether it's onboarding new talent or helping developers and designers sort of find crucial resources um, and support them sort of in growing their projects. Uh, the idea of building in public kind of became an important one for the event. So that is a, a theme that we'll be, we'll be touching upon quite a bit. Um, I think another interesting point, which as some of you will have noticed, is obviously the length of this event. Um, so our past hackathons, our Shock the Web hackathons, we did two earlier this year. Um, they've been more sort of long weekends or week-long events, um, which I guess kind of follow a slightly more traditional hackathon format um, that we often see in this, uh, in this space. Um, after those events had ended, we noticed that we kind of kept running into the same issue, uh, which is a recurring issue over and over, um, which I'm sure a lot of other event organizers and incubators, accelerators and stuff run into as well um, after these kind of hackathons, uh, which is make, basically make a drop off and project momentum loss. So um, this is kind of the idea that after hackathons, a lot of the projects die along with the sort of activity of makers as well. Um, obviously, hackathons are designed to be sort of very fast and innovative, um, innovation driven um, kind of events. Um, however, that being said, we also like to see things actually sort of impactful things and projects come out of these uh, these hackathons as well, especially when uh, they're sponsored and there are prizes up for grabs. Um, and I would say that generally this kind of also has like a big impact on the space, the Bitcoin space itself. Um, and it means that Bitcoin's innovation and momentum on the application layer, at least, can sometimes be quite stifled after these events. Um, so some of these elements were the inspiration behind this tournament. Um, and we look forward to seeing kind of an increase in activity and transparency uh, in the ecosystem because of it. Um, so how can you take part? Well, so as I mentioned, this coming Wednesday, uh, project entries will open. So that's the 12th of October. Um, and makers can basically begin listing out their projects through the tournament portal on uh, makers.botfun, uh, recruiting any team members uh, that they're looking to find and, and beginning building, basically. Um, when they enter their projects, uh, you'll be asked to select a specific project track. Um, these are quite common in these types of events, but basically tracks help makers uh, focus their projects over the course of the event. 
um, and try to sort of solve crucial challenges in Bitcoin adoption, either online or particularly in a specific region of the world. So looking at sort of local challenges and solutions. Um, for this tournament, we have two tracks available. So these are going to be the global adoption track, which is uh, sponsored by Folger Ventures. Um, and then we also have the building for Africa track, which is sponsored by the uh, African Bitcoin conference. Um, so for each track, we have four prizes available. Uh, so there's going to be a first, second and third and a best design from each track. Uh, which totals about $10,000 up for grabs. So I think it's $5,000 to the winner of the track. Um, project entries will close on November 24th. So once you've entered and you've, you've selected a track, the, the entries will close on November 24th. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll get the judges to evaluate all of the projects from their respective tracks. And we will announce a shortlist of finalists four days later on November the 28th. Um, we'll then give these finalists a week to refine and improve their projects um, and to prepare a short pitch, which they'll give on December 6th, which will be finals day. Um, we'll then uh, reevaluate the projects and the winners will be announced the next day. Um, now, I mentioned each track has four prizes, but there will also be three grand prizes uh, for some of the top projects from, from either track. So um, these are also kindly sponsored by Folk Ventures. Um, and these prizes include the legend themselves. So this is kind of the grand champion who will take home one Bitcoin. Um, and then we'll also have two runners up who will bag uh, half a Bitcoin each. So that's two Bitcoin in prizes just to the top three projects. Um, so every project entered into Legends of Lightning will automatically be registered for this for this award. So no matter what track you choose, you will be registered for this. Um, the track is simply just the entry point into the tournament. Um, and obviously what type of focus you want to choose for your project. Um, projects will be evaluated on seven different criteria. Um, I uh, will tag a tweet that uh, we sort of did on Friday, which kind of discusses a little bit um, about some of these criteria and how people can, um, yeah, how people can uh, get these awards. Uh, so these are going to be uh, value proposition and product market fit. Um, so obviously, uh, what kind of challenge does it look to solve? And uh, does it have product market fit? Um, uh, we have innovation. So is this basically something new that we've seen before? Or is it something completely, um, has it been done before? Is it completely new? Uh, we also have Bitcoin integration and scalability. Um, so uh, take what you will from that. But obviously, a lot of these solutions that we want to uh, help solve, whether it's uh, local challenges in, in Africa or um, global challenges as well and global adoption, uh, obviously, these things have got to scale. Uh, we have transparency, which is also the sort of build in public uh, criteria. So this is obviously making sure that people document their progress out in the open um, for other people to kind of see and learn from. We then have execution, which I guess goes to, you know, what was the idea that they went for and how well did they actually execute it? Uh, we have design because we believe that design is a really important aspect to adoption um, and to sort of driving a lot of this innovation. Um, and then finally, we have a bit of a sort of a je ne sais quoi or otherwise kind of known as like the spice factor criteria, which I guess is a little bit open to um, to the judges to kind of see fit for that. Um, we'll get the judges to score each project on these criteria, giving them a score from uh, zero to five for each one. Um, and then these scores will be added up um, and the finalists and the winners will be will sort of be tallied up and announced from that. Um Obviously, these criteria are open to some subjective interpretation from the judges. So um, particularly for the Building for Africa track, um, this obviously the judges will be taking into account a lot of local knowledge and problems and solutions. And obviously the global adoption track, um, the judges will also do the same for that. Like how can these projects solve issues on the global level? Um, OK, so that was obviously a lot, um, but I think we probably covered almost everything there. Um, so thank you for, for staying with me. Um, the only thing left is obviously to just hear from some of our awesome judges and gain a little bit of insight into uh, what they're excited for and uh, what they want to see during the tournament and um, yeah, maybe how to get on their good side. So uh, perhaps we can go around and uh, if they're comfortable, the judges can give a quick introduction 
uh, to themselves, maybe um, very briefly sort of what they what they do um, and talk a little bit about what excites them most about uh, the Legends of Lightning tournament. So uh, first on my list, actually, just in terms of who is first, uh, Abukar, we have you up. Um, would you like to maybe come up, give a little introduction to yourself and um, talk about what excites you about this Legends of Lightning tournament and maybe particularly your track? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, thanks again for having me. I think just to give a quick intro, I suppose. I'm Abubakar, like you mentioned. I'm a Bitcoin core contributor as, as well as one of the organizers of a program called Gala and one of the board members of B-Trust and the CEO and CTO of Recursive Capital. I mean, for me, I'm really, really interested in the hackathons really that have been going on, especially by FOMO and like Bolt Fund, specifically because I think there's a huge, huge deficit when it comes to innovation around lightning on the continent in general and just adoption. I mean, we already have quite a number of rails, but the major issues for me is on the UX side, not everything is easy to use for a lot of people, which is very necessary for getting the next billions of people onto lightning on Bitcoin. And in terms of this contest, I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of innovation and folks just building things that are out of the existing box in terms of what we're thinking about from like the product point of view and just trying to really push the bar to a level where, you know, we haven't seen frankly before. So things around, you know, easily acquiring stats, a, a lot of work around UX to ensure that folks can easily understand the lingo in this paradigm. And as well as things around like um, adoption, really. So specifically projects that are geared towards ensuring that scalability is something that's reasonable within the confines of what they're trying to build, as well as like being cognizant of the folks that they're building for. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot of stuff specifically on the Africa track. And yeah, I look forward to all the cool projects being built. Cool, yeah, thanks. And um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, Abuka is a Bitcoin core contributor. Um, what, what what has your experience been like as a contributor to Bitcoin core? Um, how did you kind of get into that? Obviously you're working a lot with Carla as well, um, teaching a lot of developers and trying to onboard the, a, a new wave of, um, of developers in Africa for Bitcoin. Like how, how, what is your experience like getting into this space? How did you find it? Um, what do you think can maybe be improved about it? And uh, do you hope to see some of those things kind of addressed during the tournament? Well, yeah, definitely. And really you just found, I guess the, the dev side of Bitcoin back in 2019 with the first uh, pull request I opened to Bitcoin Core. And ever since then, it's been like just down the dev rabbit hole. So reviewing PRs, opening PRs, but most of the time really as, as a core dev, it's really just reviewing other people's PRs and just trying to make sure that all the PRs are addressed so that we don't have like a huge, huge amount of PRs just outstanding. And with regards to like all the work we've been doing so far with folks like, you know, Tim, Bernard, Carla and all the rest, it's really focused around, like you said, ensuring that the next wave of Bitcoiners are first and foremost, technically, I guess, capable of handling the engineering challenges in the space, as well as have like a unique focus on the problems that they have in their specific locale. So ensuring that they're aware of, you know, trying to provide the perspective of folks that need more resilience on Bitcoin, need alternative avenues to access Bitcoin through like other, you know, um, other internet infrastructure that's outside of just straightforward um, internet services. And particularly with this, with this contest, I think one thing I'm really looking forward to with regards to like the wider context of Africa is, again, folks really thinking outside the box to try and incorporate some of the issues we have on ground, like whether it's intermittent electricity or frankly bad internet coverage, just things around that to ensure that we're really able to build tools that make a lot of sense. And on the VC side, of course, this is very, very helpful for us. Because again, it just means we're able to incubate some of these ideas that just need that little push because we're really quite early stage as a Bitcoin VC. So that's another thing we're looking forward to. Yeah, great, great. That's uh, like you said, I think um, there are a lot of things which need to be sort of addressed and solved uh, on ground. Um, the uh, the example you just gave of sort of electricity cutouts and things like that is actually a really interesting one. Um, 
and yeah, hopefully we see a lot of cool stuff come. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing which projects uh, get entered into the sort of building for Africa track. Um, and hopefully we'll see a big cohort from the from the Kuala crew. Um, they have actually been pretty pretty good with our last hackathons. Uh, I think our last uh, Shock the Web actually was won by a couple of Kala devs uh, who did the Ellen uh, stack tips. Um, which was a really cool project. So um, really huge hats off to you guys. And um, yeah, thank you for thank you for taking part and looking forward to um, hopefully seeing what comes of it. Uh, Nicholas, you are next up on my screen. How are you doing, Nicholas? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having us today. No, not at all, not at all. Um, would you like to uh, give a little bit of an introduction to yourself um, and sort of what you do in the Bitcoin space? Yes, I'm Nicolas Berthe. I work at Galloway. We are developing open source uh, banking solution on Bitcoin. So the idea is to have a, an open source platform that uh, you can use if you want to build um, yeah, anything related to, to banking really uh, using Bitcoin. So whether it's a payment application or uh, something else, uh, yeah, we aim to have a, an easy solution to onboard uh, banking-like project. Um, we yeah um, we have also released a, an interesting project I think for this hackathon called StableSat some uh, months ago. Um, the idea of StableSat is to be able to have uh, USD synthetic USD over Lightning, and I think there is uh, many interesting integration possible for a hackathon like this. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing this one. What was the uh... Uh, I guess uh, speaking to Abu there about some of the sort of local challenges in in places like Africa. Uh, obviously, you guys have been working a lot in um, Central America, South America, trying to get some sort of community banking going there. Um, how how much of a challenge do you think that's actually been in this space? And um, it, it must be a really particularly exciting kind of place to be in that sort of that aspect of community banking. Um, are you hoping to see quite a few new community banks kind of come out of this tournament? Yeah, yeah. I expect a lot of community banks coming up online in the next, um, I guess, year, uh, probably quarter. Um, and it will be in, in Africa and in, in Latin America, definitively. I think this is where there is a lot of uh, need for, for Bitcoin. Um, yeah, as you said, we, we have a, a wallet in El Salvador called the Bitcoin Beach Wallet, and we. What's very interesting is to see the wallet go uh, month over month. You know, you, you if you with the uh, media headline from, you know, um, I guess, main media, you will see that hey, you know, no one used Bitcoin in, in El Salvador. Um, what we see is actually the opposite. We see more and more people using it, uh, and this is great. Um, it's all over Lightning. Uh, you know, I think the solution works extremely well in El Salvador. Uh, one of the hurdles is uh, the volatility, but it's something that we we are working to to fix. And a lot of other companies are working to, to try to bring, um, I guess, uh, either stable coin or stable sets or something along this line to. To help smooth um, onboarding to Bitcoin, uh, the idea to use Lightning but not be necessarily subject to volatility, uh, I think it's something that uh, has been a major pain point over the last uh, year. And obviously, it's correlated with uh, you know the price. Um, uh, yeah, another thing that uh, is. Um, I guess extremely important. Uh, I don't know if it meets a lot of the criteria for the hackathon, but uh, is education. That is, in in um, yeah, in, in El Salvador, like uh, Bitcoin and Lightning will only get mass adoption if there is a lot of a lot more education uh, across the country. So it's also something that we we are doing. We are contributing um, in in our case with Gallery with a conference on adopting Bitcoin. Which is um, which will have its second uh, session this year in November, and we expect to have about a thousand people. And this year, it's interesting because there will be a lot more local people uh, than last year. Last year, there was a lot of uh, foreigner coming to El Salvador, you know, because uh, Bitcoin law was just passed. But this year, we expect to have um, a, a lot more 
local people that know, you know, are interesting to learn about uh, Bitcoin and Lightning. And uh, we think this will help, you know, to have all the, uh, whether it's uh, executive at companies, you know, wanted to learn more, maybe the local developers that want to dig into Lightning, we hope this will uh, be helpful. Yeah, amazing. It's, I actually uh, read an article the other day that <laughs> pretty much touched upon this exact point that, that you did. Of, um, I think the headline was something like Bitcoin, oh, sorry, El Salvador's uh, Bitcoin experiment has been a huge catastrophic failure, right? And uh, in the article, they kind of said, you know, only a quarter of the people in El Salvador are actually using Bitcoin. But I think when you probably speak to a Bitcoiner, you're like, wow, actually, I think that's a huge success. Like, um, Obviously, yeah, more people could be doing it, but it's just kind of the start. And um, it must have been a pretty uh, exciting journey to kind of be uh, at the very root of that movement in somewhere like El Salvador. Um, and as you said, a huge part of that is to do with education, whether or not it's um, education of users on the ground, you know, how to how to use a wallet, whether it's an on-chain wallet or a lightning wallet, um, how to maybe use hardware for savings multi-sigs whatever it is and even just kind of understanding uh i think what currency is and what money is and i think that seems to be one thing which with conversations with my friends is that a lot of education needs to kind of happen around what what money is um what's galoy doing on the ground or, or what have you seen on the ground with regards to uh, sort of education of uh, whether it's developers or product teams that are uh, maybe working with local companies to help implement solutions. Has, has there been a lot of that in El Salvador? Yes, there is some of that. Uh, I think there should be more of it. Um, currently, there is a lot of the technology being used in El Salvador, um, being developed by foreign companies. Um, there, there is now some companies that are you know, local and trying to, um, I guess, uh, uh, educate developer on board developer, but I think it, it's still right now uh, a very niche uh, market. Uh, I I know some of the challenges that the, there is a very well established pattern where some of the best students for in computer science um, basically they are the school work with them to have them work for a US company, but. It's like a, you know the consulting I guess framework where uh, those students are not being currently well incentivized to look into Bitcoin and Lightning uh, because they, they have this track if you want where like if you're a good student you speak English and you you know who will place you in one of the consulting company and you will work for a US company uh, and and therefore there is not a huge incentive to learn about Bitcoin and Lightning. Um, but uh, yeah, it's something that, you know, hopefully uh, uh, the conference we are doing also, where if you're in El Salvador, uh, if you're an El Salvadorian, you can, uh, you can join the conference uh, for $21. Um, you know, we hope it will bring more people developing on, uh, on, on Bitcoin and Lightning. So, uh, I, I know also there have been many talks about the idea of this different set of laws that the El Salvador government is trying to pass. This will also hopefully have an effect to have more companies establishing themselves in El Salvador, and, uh, you know, bringing more innovation, I guess, from El Salvador. Oh well, yeah, that's uh, that's what we hope to see. And uh, as Nicholas mentioned, there is going to be a uh, adopting Bitcoin event, which I think is going to be November 15th to the 17th uh, on the ground in El Salvador. So if you would like to come and uh, check out some of the things that he's talking about, uh, maybe visit Bitcoin Beach, see how this community actually runs and operates, um, then that is going to be a really exciting time uh, to do it. Um, cool. Thank you very much, Nicholas. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, to seeing what comes. Thanks. Uh, Paco, how are you doing, man? You said you are on the ground in Ethiopia at the moment. How are things there? Yeah, man. Hi, good evening, everyone. Yeah, things are good. It's really cold here. It's a mountainous country. But it's like, there is a lot of fear in the air. But yeah, man, it's Ethiopia, the origin of Africa. 
Good, good. And uh, so for everyone uh, here, do you want to maybe give a little bit of an introduction to uh, who you are, what you do in the Bitcoin space, uh, your running for Bit- running with Bitcoin uh, project, um, and kind of what, what you've been up to? All right. Hi, good evening, fellow plebs. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me over. Uh, my name is Paco. I am from India, and I am traveling around 40 countries by using Bitcoin. Uh, the purpose of the journey is to show there that there is mass adoption of Bitcoin and to do Bitcoin meetups. So far, I've hosted about 62 Bitcoin meetups in 21 countries, ultimately to show that humans are kind people. Because in the midst of maximalism and toxicity and shitcoining, people forget that we all are humans. So I share that with my blogs, that humans are really kind. And this journey is a reason, like this journey is a proof that Bitcoiners are kind people because everybody has shared and contributed in their own way. And hence, this journey has been possible. And today is day number 388. Uh, yeah, this is what I do in the Bitcoin space. And what I'm really, what I'm really looking for in the Africa Bitcoin conference, um, the hackathon is definitely the education aspect. I got the UX. Yes, you need the UI UX, but it's all about education because if you go down to any African country, they have anywhere between 60 to 250 languages. And along with the different languages, there are different tribes. Uh, It just gets really difficult for the information to get passed down. As all I've learned over my past travels in Africa is that it is not the resources that lack. It is the lack of information because information doesn't reach to the right ears. And I've just been seeing there have been great inventions been happening. Machakuru is one of them that I really love. And what Kala is trying to do here and what B-Trust is trying to do for Africa is just amazing. So I would be just looking them from my personal perspective of how I have felt the need on the ground where the person doesn't even have internet. There are areas without even basic mobile connectivity. There are areas without even electricity, like in Congo, DR Congo North, they just live on solar electricity. That too is for just two hours a day. So, yeah, that's what I'm really excited. And I just want to meet Africa because, yeah, Africa, Bitcoin was made for Africa. Thank you. And uh, so that's that sounds awesome. Um, I'm sure we could probably sit down and talk about a lot of your travels and and here for hours, but uh, just briefly, what were tell us what were some of the uh, the countries which maybe um, or regions that maybe impressed you the most with regards to uh, people who had taken the orange pill? You know, were you surprised by uh, the number of people who were educated in Bitcoin in a certain area or were using it more than you thought or less than you thought? Maybe, um, yeah. What what places have really been a standout for you on your travels? Uh, definitely uh, I was really surprised was Nigeria was there right on the top like you got to see everything from Bitcoin mining through Bitcoin adoption through people just <laughs> you can call it money laundering but they know how to move money I think so Nigeria moves money for the entire Africa the second country would be Uganda like Uganda these these guys I know that the government is behind them but these guys are not backing down like there was there's an exchange called yellow card they had put a big billboard right on the central bank of Uganda that says buy Bitcoin. Uh, so it is really hilarious to just see Africans don't back down like Kenyans. Kenya is, I would say for Kenya, Kenya is what Singapore was 20 years ago. And this is just so ripe. Like you just have all the talents coming in down there and great things are happening. I was really surprised to see what uh, in Singapore you can do anything, man. Singapore is the biggest OTC desk market. I think so if Singaporeans and Nigerians get together, we don't need the, what's the thing? The Federal Reserve anymore. <laughs> but uh, great adoption like Sri Lanka, unfortunately, went down. Uh, but when I was there in Sri Lanka, I, I was surprised to even use that for so many things. Like I could use Bitcoin in almost like 10 different outlets. I, I, like there is Bitcoin adoption around the world. The thing is, these all places we did not, we weren't aware of. Like in Mozambique, there's a Tofu Beach. And like in Malawi, there is Bitcoin adoption. There is Bitcoin adoption. Guys, these guys, one, it was almost 10 p.m. We got done with the Bitcoin meetup and I went to sleep. Next morning, I wake up at 6 a.m. and these guys are all up. 
these guys are getting orange pilled all night they couldn't sleep and they couldn't even think about how money is being made and next thing you know they have started created a movement for bitcoin for women in uh, cameroon so i just really feel inspired from these guys only like who just didn't sleep overnight and are orange pilled so there are great 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 projects and i'm really honored and blessed to be witness them and be part of them that's super cool yeah it's really great to hear a lot of these uh, kind of stories and happenings actually on the ground i think i can uh, certainly speak for myself and maybe a couple of others here that you know when you're building these projects and when you're working in the space whether it's bitcoin or um <laughs> any type of space really when you're when there is a degree of detachment from um where you are building this thing and then where your users are actually using it uh, because a lot of products obviously are global um it's sometimes hard to get a feel for the levels of adoption or um the maybe the, even the level of impact and interest um that is kind of surrounding these things so i'm super happy to hear about uh, a lot of those things on your travels and um yeah hopefully we'll get to cross paths one day uh, that would be really exciting and thank you very much for doing the job of trying to orange pill everyone around the world uh, we really appreciate it and i hope you're having fun whilst you do it thank you thank you everybody love you and keep stacking sats and stay humble love you all awesome uh mary how are you doing um uh, mary is a podcast host at uh, the fintech x um and also part of the bitnod team um how's it going mary would you like to give a little bit of an introduction to yourself and and how you got here yeah sure um hi everyone i'm super happy to be here um so quick introduction i'll try <laughs> be as quick as i can so i'm mary and i'm a bitcoiner and content creator um So I work for Bitnob, um B I T N O B. It's a um, Bitcoin only company which enables people to borrow, save, send and receive Bitcoin. Um we also provide um Bitcoin for we also provide um a business platform um which enables like business owners to um you know send in, to receive payments for their items. Um it's called Bitnob for Business. um and i'm the media associate at bitnob uh i'm i've also been uh quite active in a couple of other bitcoin only projects like um satoshi's journal which is a bitcoin only media company um we deal with bitcoin education and news and we love sharing stories of bitcoiners from different parts of the world um i'm also part of the global bitcoin fest team and uh then on my own i run a bitcoin only gaming channel on twitch so my goal really is to let people know that it's possible to incorporate bitcoin in your daily life um so that's basically what i do and the projects that i'm engaged in um and my mission um currently in the bitcoin space so as per like my expectations for um the hackathon Um I do agree with what the other speakers said um but I think I'm going to add a little bit more by saying that I'm very excited to see projects around the creative space. Um I really believe that Bitcoin content creators are like they're so underrated and the Bitcoin content creation platforms that are in existence are underrated as well. So it'll be really cool to see um some of those type of creative projects including um projects that are going to be like projects in the in the gaming space the bitcoin gaming space and the reason why i'm really bullish about the gaming space is because um bitcoin games are a really uh low barrier um it's like it has a low barrier and ent- or entry to entry barrier um for people so it's it makes it really easy to orange pill people when they start playing bitcoin games right so i've seen it work um with different people I'm, i very i'm actually one of the moderators at um thunder games and i see how people get introduced to bitcoin through gaming um and i think that that is an industry that is something that i believe that's worth looking into um so 
things, projects that are centered around content creators are projects that I'm very excited to see because I believe that art in Africa in particular, um, we have a lot of creative talent. Um, I mean, you might know that we have a lot of African artifacts in different museums in different parts of the world. Um, and African art is um, one that is extremely unique and we're seeing it incorporated in even modern day fashion. Um, so I believe that with the youth especially, they can, we can engage the youth through creative work um, and use it as a medium to orange pill them. Um, so I think that's a really interesting aspect to look into. Um, maybe because personally I'm not a coder, <laughs> I'm actually a non-technical person and I really feel that the non-technical side of Bitcoin is something that um, people are starting to see and take note of. Um, in the early stages of Bitcoin, we were like really um, enthralled by what the developers were able to do. Um, but now I think we're coming to that area or that time in our life when creators are starting to also identify them, their, their potential or their ability to contribute to the ecosystem through their creative work. Um, and that wouldn't be possible without the existence of Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin platforms or tools that enables creators to be compensated for the creative work that they put, in, put into um, their designs or written work or video or whatever it is. So th that's my expectation and that's a little bit about me. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Uh, for those who are wondering, Mary's gonna be on the uh, Building for Africa track. Um, one of uh, eight judges so far. Uh, Mary, have you got any advice to anyone who's gonna be entering a project into this track? How can they impress you the most? Is it by maybe building a game, something educational? Um, yeah, any, any advice for those guys? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... So <laughs> it would be kind of biased if you guys build a game. <laughs> um, but aside from that, I think one thing that I would say is, um, so Africa has its unique problems um, that the West wasn't able to, so or isn't able to solve with their own innovation. So I would say, look within what is something that, um, or what is a problem that you face in Africa right now that you know very well that Bitcoin can help solve. Um, and then another one is, I mean, I'm a huge fan of creators and how can we enhance, um, or let me put it this way. So a lot of creators are going into the creative space as a whole. Um, and I'm talking about the non-Bitcoin side, right? All of creators, they're going into the creative space because they feel... Um, they could have their art appreciated and maybe one day they get brand deals and sponsorships and all those kind of things. But with Bitcoin, Bitcoin sort of ac accelerates that process. Why? Because instead of you waiting for get to get brand deals um, to finally get your work compensated or your designs compensated, um, you can go straight ahead with your lightning address or QR code or whatever it is and start um, being compensated for creative work so long as you are creating something of value, right? So I think that um, anything that would support these creators, so it would be easy for them to take a, to have a head start with um, their creative work. Um, and yeah, that's always going to be a huge plus for me, maybe because I'm a creator myself. So yeah, those are the kinds of things I'm looking out for. Cool. Okay. You heard it here first. Uh, next up. Okay. We have uh, John. John, you've been waiting there patiently. How are you doing? I'm um, great. How are you doing? Yeah, doing very well. Thank you. Um, John, I'm sure a lot of people here know you, but would you maybe like to give a little bit of an introduction to to yourself, what you're doing with Synonym, slash tags, and, uh, and yeah, we can start there and then maybe go into a little bit about what you're looking forward to in the tournament. Sure. My name is John Carvalho. I am Bitcoin Error Log on Twitter. Um, I have been in Bitcoin for about 10 years now. Uh, I am a, uh, I guess you would say, toxic Bitcoin maximalist. 
Um, I am CEO at a company called Synonym, where we are basically trying to make a whole ecosystem of products, technology, and services to facilitate accelerating hyper-Bitcoinization. And so we have, you know, various uh, products and a protocol that we're creating to kind of explore what it would actually be like if we succeeded in undermining having, you know, control over us by big tech, big state and big banks. Um, we will be announcing some, you know, updates at the end of the month at the Plan B conference in Lugano. Um, but one of the things we do as far as Lightning goes is we have a implementation of the LDK, uh, Lightning Development Kit, uh, for React Native for mobile. And we also have one that we started working on as a full node as well. But as far as, you know, just things we do specifically for Lightning, there's that. And we also have a fully open source product and, and software stack for LSPs called Block Tank. And this is just a way that anybody can either monetize their channels and act as a kind of business routing node or supplement any app uh, or wallet product where they have a, a or app that has a wallet inside and kind of use the LSP as a way to create a better user experience for people so they can more easily connect to Lightning Network and you know, have their routing taken care of by a more intentionally you know, uh, created business service. Um, we're also making a protocol called Slash Tags, and this is more showing how you could do Web3 sort of solutions without a blockchain. And so this is basically combining the hypercore technology with concepts of using uh, public-private key pairs for identity and for using them just for generally anchoring data to. And we're going to kind of demonstrate this also at the end of the month when we'll release a kind of... Uh, official first sort of version of slash tags and it's SDK and they'll have a playground and various other documentation available. Um, so everybody can kind of put it in their hands and see what they can do with it. So yeah, that's my summary. Cool. So uh, hopefully maybe a little bit of uh, material for makers to start hacking with at this, at this event. Sure. Um, you know, the, like I said, the block tank stuff is all open source. And the slash tag stuff, honestly, a lot of it is open source. We just don't have very friendly documentation published yet. So you might have to like ask for some help and to dig in and have, you know, sincere interest. But there's actually a lot of really cool things you can do when you combine these concepts of like a hypercore DHT and these sort of like uh, networked like virtual drives, for lack of a better way to put it, and to save time. Um, but if you combine these kind of primitives with Lightning Network, there's actually a lot of really cool things that you can accomplish, and that's what we work on as a company. But it would be exciting to see people kind of explore those areas. Um, one thing I was thinking while uh, everybody was answering and just thinking about the, the tournament in general is, like, this is not a normal hackathon. There is a, you know, a high reward available um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, lesser rewards beyond the grand prize. And so I think there's just a lot of money available and there's a lot of time to work on it. And there should be a lot of competition here. And so I, I am hoping not to see that this is just a bunch of like website ideas with, you know, a lightning address attached to it. I'd like to see like, you know, people actually exploring the problems that, you know, the, 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 the battlefronts of lightning, you know, things like getting user experience to be easy and not confusing and intimidating for a user by incorporating an LSP into your app. Um, I don't know, like actually implementing the cool things that lightning can do. You have, uh, different things that you can do for user experiences for cloud nodes. You have user experiences for LSP or, or Lightning liquidity marketplaces. It's not just about like putting Lightning as a payment method in your project. You have to really focus on what are the new powers that Lightning makes possible that weren't possible before. Um, you know, you could start with just the fact that it's instant and allows high frequency payments, but there's a lot of other stuff going on there that if you really understand Lightning and understand you know, what kind of things it can do that were not possible before, uh, you, you should be able to create a lot of cool hacks. For sure. Uh, John, you were obviously a, a judge at our past to shock the web events, um, which I think uh, there were some really cool projects that came out of that. But like you said, um, what we're really looking to, to push 
uh, in this next tournament, which is obviously it's longer, it's bigger, uh, it's got more prize money. Um, and yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. We're really looking to kind of um, get people just actually really interested in this stuff, building really innovative, cool stuff, and also like building it out in the open um, so that other people can kind of can kind of learn from it. Um, love what you guys are doing with uh, all a lot of your open source uh, stuff and also some of the stuff that is in the tank um, and coming towards us. So um, hopefully we get some cool developer action on some of those things, maybe some people playing around with some of your kits and APIs and stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for, for joining us and uh, hopefully some people impress. Um, Cool. Uh, we have uh, we also have Tim and I think it's Tim Tekenberg and also uh, Kyle up with us. Um, Tim, do you wanna do you wanna go ahead and give a little bit of introduction to to yourself? Um, let everyone know kind of what you do in the space and and maybe then we can talk about what you're excited to see at the event. Certainly. Thanks for the intro. Uh, so just to give you a little bit about myself. Uh, I go by Takenbur on Twitter, but uh, most people know me in real life as Tim Akimbo. Uh, I'm a software developer. I love to write software. Uh, I write software for a living. I also write software as a hobby. Um, just like Abubakar as well, um, I'm one of the organizers at Kala, which is a a Bitcoin and Lightning Network Development Training Institute focused on Africa. Um, I also do some Bitcoin development as well. I contribute to a number of projects in the space and my focus uh, is around Bitcoin privacy and censorship resistance. So uh, most of my contributions to date has been in the joint market uh, coin join software project uh, and I would say basically that Bitcoin changed my life you know I it's kind of a really really long story uh, I think I I have spoken a little bit about it on some podcasts that I've participated in um, I am um, really excited about, about this particular hackathon. Um, I think some of the speakers have already kind of summarized most of the things that um, not only makes me excited about the hackathon, but also the kinds of things that I'm hoping to see uh, come out from, from the hackathon. Um, you rightly mentioned that, you know, one of the things that we see with a lot of hackathons that have happened in the past is you see a lot of really cool projects, very interesting projects that, you know, after the hackathons, there's just this drop off uh, by the developers of the project and they don't get to maintain those projects. I remember one of them specifically that I love so much. Um, it, it used to be a, a lightning browser extension uh, I forget the name of the extension right now. It was one of the very first uh, browser extensions for... Jewel. Uh, yes, Jewel. That is one of those projects that, you know, makes me extremely sad that, you know, a lot of developments did not continue on the project because it was a very good example of how uh, a Lightning wallet should be implemented, right? Um, the user experience was top-notch, and you know it it worked most of the time uh of course most of the problems were you know related to lightning things uh but that was kind of like a project that you know had significant staying power and despite the fact that it's not been actively developed it's still useful uh to some extent to this very day uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing projects that have that kind of staying power. Um, I think, like John mentioned, there is sufficient time for teams that are looking to build projects to be able to come up with, you know, something more than just, you know, a single page web application that has a lightning URL. 
that does something and hoping that we might start to see you know applications that can that really drive bitcoin adoption um i mean we talk bitcoin adoption bitcoin adoption and you know anything really that increases bitcoin awareness anything that increases bitcoin usage is what i would term a project that increases bitcoin adoption i am going to be focused on the um building for africa track of the hackathon and i'm hoping to see a little bit more projects that promote circular economies um i'm looking to see more and you know better on and off ramps um i'm i'm looking forward to seeing projects that actually kind of encourage the use of bitcoin in novel ways right so like john mentioned um the ability for you to build things and use lightning in ways that have not been possible before but bitcoin kind of makes possible um you know on the african continent there are 54 nations and of those 54 nations there are only probably less than 20 percent of them that have any significant payments infrastructure uh, Bitcoin is that technology that finally makes financial infrastructure something that anyone anywhere on the face of the planet can plug into. And I'm looking forward to seeing projects that recognize this potential and are looking at building solutions that you know capitalize on on this opportunity and can help to drive um, the economic prosperity of a lot of these places that are kind of excluded. So that's, in summary, what I am looking forward to seeing in the project. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see the kinds of entries that we would have. Um, I think the, the prices are very attractive and I hope that would create some significant incentive for um, talented developers across the world, and especially in the continent of Africa to um, you know, take interest in this and, and build solutions. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Um, also very looking, looking forward to seeing, uh, what comes out of that, uh, what comes out of that track. Um, I think potentially either sometime this week and also maybe, uh, during the event as well, we're also going to be running a lot of sort of Twitter spaces, um, giving people a chance to, um talk about what they're building maybe exploring uh some ideas and concepts and uh movements such as uh community banking things like that so um there'll be a lot more opportunity to talk about some of these local solutions to africa and hopefully you can you can join us in some of those chats um but yeah thank you for for joining us today we really appreciate it uh final judge uh we see here is kyle Carl Murphy, how are you doing, man? Uh, have you had a good weekend with Pleb Lab? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. I actually just had my fiance get back into town. Uh, I have not made it to our Pleb Dev weekend, but I have been informed that things are going quite well. So, awesome. awesome. Yeah, we uh, we. Uh, so just a bit of uh, background noise there. Um, yeah, we spoke with uh, with Carl and uh, Carl on Friday, I think, to have a little chat about what was happening at Pleb Lab this weekend. They had a um, a couple of days where they invited a bunch of devs to come into Pleb Lab, did some fun hacking, did some workshops. It sounded like a really, really awesome event. Uh, Carl, for those of you, um, for those people who are not familiar with your work and, and what you do in the space. Do you want to maybe give a little bit of a, a short introduction to, to who you are and what you do? Sure. So uh, my name is Kyle Murphy. I kind of really got started in the space not all that long ago. Uh, a relatively late entrance, perhaps compared to some of the other people here, uh, especially some of these speakers. Shout out to Mr. John Carvalho, who actually came to our very it was like I think our second Austin Bitcoin Club meetup back then. It was uh, it was wild to just even be in the presence of John and and get to learn from from somebody who's been so deeply involved for so long. 
these days, um, a little bit more involved than we used to be. But from the Austin Bitcoin Club, which was really just uh, me and Carr's attempt to launch a more social uh, community gathering than just the bit devs, which was great. It was a lot of people getting together, but was really highly technical for most of it. Um, from the ABC spawned Pleb Lab. Um, in the early days, Pleb Lab was just our attempt to give the community that showed up to ABC what they wanted. We had a lot of requests to get developers together more often than bit devs. Uh, so we started exploring how we could help to do that. We started looking at houses. One thing led to another. The place where we were hosting the Austin Bitcoin Club uh, kind of gave us access to a 10-person office space. And we decided after a little bit of uh, internal kind of communications with the team that we would kind of launch the space with the effort being geared towards something like an accelerator program. We had no idea how to run an accelerator program. We um, didn't really think in those early days that like trying to sell what we had as an accelerator program made any kind of sense. So what we did, we got access to an office space for 10 people for three months for free. And our thought process in those early days was like, okay, look, we have three people. We have an office space for 10 people and all three of us think we can help if given the opportunity. So we basically went out and we gave it away. We found a couple of really smart, really like long-term developers in the space. Some big brains like Ben Carmen, uh, Tony Giorgio, um, Future Paul. And then beyond those guys, we basically went out and we found a couple of really early stage uh, founders working on, I mean, basically unknown Bitcoin company projects. And we put them all in a room together and we just worked together to figure out how we could accelerate each other's projects. The brain space was great. The ability to like kind of feed off of each other's strengths and support each other in our weaknesses uh, was really beneficial. But over time, we basically just created a space where a bunch of people uh, who really genuinely care about one another come in on a daily basis to try and, and continue the growth uh, of what it is we're working on and the people that we are working with are working on. And that's basically where we're at today. We are no longer in our free 200 square foot office. We've just recently moved into a 3,500 square foot office we started renting desks uh, at like a co-working space and we have just finished our first round of founder interviews uh, where we are now working with companies on kind of a more legitimized basis. And I guess that's probably a good, good pivot point to kind of jump into the question that you've been asking the other judges is like, what are we kind of looking forward to out of this hackathon? And it's already been touched on a bit, but I think... One of the interesting things that we've been looking to explore at Club Lab through our own hackathons is this kind of furthering of the work past the hackathon. And I know I've heard a couple of judges already talk about it, but it is one of those things that's proven really tricky in our experience thus far is that even with decent prize money, a lot of the people who show up to build are either already working for a Bitcoin company, are already kind of founders of their own Bitcoin company. The real trick is to get a project that seems so worthwhile that people are kind of willing to drop what it is they're doing elsewhere and, and really pursue the continual developments. And I myself would really love to see with this longer format and higher prize money, I would like to see if that's something that can shape up and, and kind of pan out from this because I think there's a lot of really valuable things that come out of hackathons but it's something I noticed a while ago in, in talking with people who thought hackathons would be a good idea for kind of further development of the space. It seems that the biggest challenge is kind of taking those projects and actually finding the time, energy, and resources to build them out into something that stays. So. Right on, man. Exactly. Uh, creating things that, that actually last. Um, and I think as... Uh, your experience has probably told you as someone who is kind of um, really right in the midst of a lot of that innovation and excitement, uh, whether it's uh, lightning or um, design work or whatever it is on, on the ground in Austin, um, I'm sure 
as you said, you'd agree that uh, there's still some work to be done. Um, and there is, uh, I think, still a lot of kind of like community momentum to be built around um, a lot of the ideas that we're talking about today and a lot of the technologies that hopefully people will be playing with um, a lot. Um, hopefully we see some hackers from the Pleb Lab enter uh, some awesome projects have come out of there in the past. So I'm um, looking forward to, yeah, hopefully seeing some some cool stuff come out of there. Um, not even just from this weekend. Obviously, we mentioned there's been a Pleb weekend for the Legends of Lightning events. Um, so um, it'd be nice to see some some teams come out of there. Um, but yeah, um, as, uh, as Carl said, uh, a lot of this stuff is, these are important things, I think, to address in the space. And that is hopefully what we are going to do with Legends of Lightning. Um, it is uh, five or six minutes past the hour now. Um, it is obviously a Sunday, uh, so don't want to keep everyone too long. But if anyone has any questions uh, for either me, whether it's the logistics of the tournament and how to enter, or how to enter your projects, obviously, please feel free to uh, raise your hand or just uh, request to speak. Um, or if you had a, uh, a particular question for a judge or a some of the judges, uh, which some of them could answer. Um, yeah, please, please feel free to uh, just raise your hand or request to speak, and, and we can we can do those now. Um, I see Hafiz has requested uh, to speak. I'll just invite you up here. Hey guys. Hafiz, how's it going? Hey. Um, Have you got a question for our judges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually working on a project. Um, it's called uh, it's called Sats for Unga. So I've basically built some uh, some tech that allows you to, how shall you say, to virtualize your mobile money account in Africa so you can program on top of it. And I've already tested it in like five countries. But one of the things I want to do is actually... Um, use that to kind of start an initiative um, that allows people from overseas to use the Lightning Network to buy unga, which is maize flour in Kenya for a week. I'm originally from Kenya. My parents are still there. You know, I'm very tightly connected to that. And I don't know if you know about, you know, the, the situation in Kenya, but unga prices have been going up drastically and there's a lot of poverty in Kenya. So one of the things I've been trying to think about is a project that rather than talks about lightning, hodling, and all this stuff, actually demonstrates the power of the lightning network and, and works to, number one, educate people in Kenya about lightning because they probably don't know about it. The second thing is highlight what the advantage of lightning is over the traditional plumbing infrastructure because if you were to do this through remittances, you couldn't directly donate two pounds to buy somebody food for, for a week in Kenya directly, but with Lightning and with the other tech that I've put together, it's actually possible to do this project. Um, I'm looking for help with people who want to be part of my team. So anyone that has UX design skills or is also good at putting together a community because the way the system is built, you need a number of people to contribute their phone accounts, their mobile money accounts and form a bridge to the Lightning network and create liquidity to do the transfers. So I'm, I'm just looking for people to connect with that can kind of help me, uh, you know, run this project. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's really cool to hear about this project. And uh, um, sounds like a, a suitable one for the Building for Africa track. Um, if you want to find uh, people to team up with, um, I would recommend going to the tournament webpage, which is makers.bolt.fun forward slash tournaments uh, forward slash one overview. Um, you can also just find it on the, if you go to the Bolt Fun, uh, makers.boltfun, you'll see it. Uh, there's a big banner there directly on the homepage as well. Uh, or if you go to bolt.fun and click on the hackathon um, in the top navigation bar, it will take you straight to that page. Um, so there are already 130 makers who have registered their interest in taking part. Uh, and when you register, you'll notice that you can basically set your hacking status. So this can either be open to connect or you can be hacking solo. Um, so what I would recommend is uh, take a look at that page, take a look at some of the makers who are um, taking part in the tournament or wanting to take part. Um, and if you're looking for a particular role, 
Um, you can also search by role. So you can select from the drop down. You can go to like UI UX designers um, and you can even go to the makers who are looking for a team tab. Um, and that should show you a bunch of people who are um, ready to team up with um, and hopefully have some skills that, that can help you out. So um, that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about your idea, uh, it would be great to hear a little bit more. And obviously that's a great way to try and recruit makers. So uh, what you can also do is uh, obviously go to uh, our homepage and just write a story. So uh, create your profile. And if you want to just write a story about uh, your project uh, or maybe what the idea is, maybe how you want to integrate lightning, uh, what type of people you're looking to help you out. Um, and just use the tag brainstorm. Um, that usually seems to be a good way to get people um, talking about your idea and commenting on it. Um, and then finally, uh, if you really want to as well, you can join our community Discord. Um, I'm very happy to uh, send you a, a direct message with a link for that. Um, but if you join our Discord, um, we've got, I think, over 250 makers in there, uh, some of whom are obviously going to be hacking solo uh, for, at this current tournament or past events. Um, and then obviously a lot of people who are also looking for teams in there. So um, that's probably a good way, place to sort of hang out um, and find people. But definitely give it a start through the tournament's um, the tournament portal um and yeah best of luck sounds like an awesome project and, and looking forward to seeing what gets built thanks of course of course uh has anybody else got any questions for either myself or our judges um if not we can uh, we can maybe call it there um as always, uh, I am available to help anybody answer any questions um, or uh, any any help that they need with the with the tournament. If you have any um, ideas that you want to start hacking on, you want to like learn about formulating them. If you want to get connected to other people in the space, uh, if you want to figure out how to register uh, for the tournament or create your maker profile, uh, please feel free to just get in touch with me. Uh, my name is Ed. I am at Barefoot88 on Twitter. Uh, you can also obviously find me in Discord uh, or you can just uh, slide into our Bolt Fund DMs directly. Um, I also see we've got Christoph in this space as well. Uh, Christoph is an awesome designer from the Bitcoin design community who are also going to be hosting an event starting this week. It is the Bitcoin Designathon. Um, this is going to be a really awesome opportunity for designers in the space who are looking to either accelerate maybe some of their, their ideas um, or kind of just start out and get to grips with them. Um, I think it's going to run for 11 days um, and it's going to be kind of a no-code event where people can play around, push some pixels um, and start formulating some ideas and some designs as well. Um, so actually, Hafiz, that's probably a good thing to do uh, if you are looking for uh, designers or people to help you design your project, um, you can go to their webpage, which is event.bitcoin.design. Uh, I hope that got that right, Christoph. Um, I will also try and link it in here, actually. Uh, that's probably a good thing to do. It's only three days until the event starts. Um, but that's also going to be a really great opportunity um, for you to... Uh, yeah, kind of link up with some some awesome designers, um, get some consulting on some of those designs and recruit people into your team. Um, we've also got Bitcoin Amsterdam kicking off this week. John mentioned that he's going to be there. So uh, go give him a high five and say hi if you are there with him. Um, we've obviously just had the uh, the Pleb Lab event uh, and we've also got TabConf. So TabConf is going to be starting, I think, on the 12th. They've got a builder day there. Um, I think there are going to be some really awesome uh, teams and people who are going to be helping uh, running desks and helping people get to grips with a lot of these things. So if you're on the ground in Atlanta, uh, check out TabConf. If you're in Europe or Amsterdam, obviously go uh, there. There are going to be loads of meetups as well around the side, I think, as always with these events. Um, and if you're online, if you're interested in design or you want to team up with some designers, uh, go check out the Bitcoin Designathon as well. Um, but other than that, guys, we're going to be kicking off on Wednesday. Uh, really, really looking forward to it. Um, and just want to say a big shout out and thanks to all of our judges who have uh, been with us today. Um, it's a real pleasure to be working alongside a lot of you guys. And um, 
yeah, hopefully we get some awesome things coming out of this. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are interested in taking part in the tournament, if you haven't already, go and register. Um, you can find the tournament portal um, in the in the tweet that I embedded in this space, or you can just find it on the makers.bolt.fun site. Um, we've got 130 signups so far. Uh, hopefully we'll get another 130. Um, and just really looking forward to seeing some of the projects. Um, but thanks, guys. Hope everyone has a wonderful uh, Sunday, the rest of your Sunday. And uh, thank you for joining, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.